inside of their lives today. So if you guys could give a very warm, happy Calvary Assembly welcome to the one and only Caleb Longabaw. Hey guys, so my name is Caleb. You may know me from playing bass up here on stage. Um, you may also know me as the tall guy who blocks the screen during worship. I'm sorry for that. You can talk to me after the service. Um, but yeah, today we have the theme of being alive. And I want to talk about that as it applies to a community of believers. So if you go to Hebrews 10, 24 through 25, Paul says, And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. So Paul is talking about the idea of how we, how we support each other, how we can encourage each other in a community, and ultimately make each other stronger than we would be by ourselves. So it's very clear in the Bible that the, the sphere, if you will, of our faith includes more than just you and God. It's you, God, and then all the people around you. So a quick illustration, if you, pick, if you picture your network of believers as a tree, you have the different branches, right? And then you have the, the trunk that makes up all the different members. And then your roots are in God. So the tree taps into the love of God, if you will, through its roots and then disperses that throughout the rest of the tree. So one function of God's grace in God's community is that it, it, it disperses life to the rest of the community. This means we have to be aware of areas of need within each other's lives, and that means be aware of spiritual health, physical health, mental health, all of that stuff. A community that is alive is constantly funneling God's love to those areas of need, and not just when the tree is about to die. It's at all times. There's a certain God-given responsibility to know and be aware of things that are going on deep down in each other's hearts, right? And if we want to receive that grace and receive that, then we have to let other people know that we need it. A lot of people feel like, man, I feel so isolated, and I feel like I'm going through pain that no one knows about. Well, how many people know about it? Honestly. You can't claim that you're abandoned by grace if you're running from it. The reason you can't do that is because community is the platform through which God's love flows to the rest of the world. I can, I can show my own example of this. I recently went through a time where I was struggling with uh, depression and anxiety. And uh, at first, you know, when that happened, I tried, I tried to pray it away. God, take this from me. God, heal me. And I tried to rely on my own faith to heal me. But how many of you guys know that sometimes you can't be your own source of life? And it got worse until it got to the point where I endangered myself and I endangered the people around me. But what I didn't realize was that all times, in my darkest times, I was surrounded by a community. People asking me every day, Caleb, how are you? Caleb, how are you doing? Caleb, can I pray for you? Caleb, I believe in you. Caleb, I love you. All these things. And they asked me all these questions to the point where it got annoying. <laughs> really, really annoying. The thing was, they were there to attack my problem with me. And not just, not just pray for me, but literally insert themselves into my struggle. That consistency is what brought me back to my feet. That's what did it. That's what community is for. We, we, we swarm struggles. We dogpile them. We don't say, that's the responsibility of someone else. That's the responsibility of the family. But we, we look at a problem and a struggle and say, no, that's, that's my responsibility. That's up to us as a whole. Now, if you go back to the tree analogy, a tree doesn't just grow two branches and then stop. That'd be really weird. <laughs> if it did, then something would eventually come and knock it down, and then your tree's dead. Oh. And that way, we need to be growing our communities. We need to be extending so we can administer God's love to a larger group of people. You might be thinking, well, duh. Everyone knows you're supposed to share God's love. I do that. I share God with my friends, and that's amazing. That's so valuable. But it, I'm telling you, it's not enough just to, just to show love. It's not enough just to pray. You need to connect those people back to the same life source and the same roots that you're from, or they will wither back to what they were before, I'm telling you. 
It's not always just enough to convert someone or to pray for someone. Even though those things are amazing and they bring life, it's not enough all the time. When you become a person's only connection to God, and then you leave, they starve. We need a community to connect us back to God. There's people out there with dozens of friends, and somehow they're still disconnected. They're still lonely. It doesn't make sense. We need a community to connect us back to God. Guys, it's really powerful when you, when you first accept God into your heart. It's amazing. You're, you're really hyped, and that's a really powerful moment. But you know what's more powerful than that? When you're, when you're years into your, in your walk with God, and somehow you're at your lowest point, and you're in the grips of depression, and you're in the grips of anxiety, and you're losing hope, and suddenly 20 people come around you and say, we're not going to let you fall. We're not going to let you fall. We refuse to. And we're going to pick you back up. And that's one of the most amazing things in the world, to have that around you. That will get you through life. That's why we're ever expanding our communities of friends, of family, of believers, because there are people who are suffering from what I went through and many other things, probably much worse. And they need to be connected back to a body so God's grace can be distributed to them. I'm glad to say I've seen this in action happening at our youth group. Every, every Wednesday, uh, new kids are coming in, and they're getting connected immediately with 20 other believers. And they have that. They have that now. Um, every Wednesday, Josh Romack smacks little kids half his age in foosball, and he's teaching your kids lessons in humility. <laughs> okay, getting, getting serious. When a, when a collective goes after a struggle, it's so much more effective. And that makes me wonder how many people are being deprived who have 30 friends but are lonely because they are not surrounded by a heavenly community. God is calling us to grow our communities, not in numbers necessarily, but in, in reliance and connection. And I know from my own life how awesome it is to be able to rely on a whole church to pick me back up to my feet when I fall. The more you see that happen, the more you will see God's hand at work. Thank you. That's all my time.